When Resident Evil 4 was announced, I was honestly confused. All I could think was why they would be making a remake to a massively successful game in the franchise. Why can't they go into titles that honestly need it? <coughs> Code Veronica. <coughs> Sorry about that. Although I still feel that way, I also remembered the Resident Evil 1 remake, which was absolute perfection. The original was a success and the remake surpassed that in every single way possible. So I went into this Resident Evil 4 remake with optimism. And now we're finally here and the remake of Resident Evil 4 is literally everything I wanted in a Resident Evil remake. No, let's do better than that. It's everything I wanted in a Resident Evil game. I've said the story so many times, but I'm going to go ahead and say it once more. The original Resident Evil 4 was the first Resident Evil game I've ever played, and it scared me to death, and I'm pretty sure I damaged my little brothers as well because I forced them to watch. I'm 26 now, and I don't get scared easy, but this game kept me at the edge of my seat through most of the game, and even to the point where I had to stand up and swerve around as I played, and I haven't done that since I was in middle school. I'm grown, dammit. I'm a big boy, and I can handle my horror. Except this horror game. In this review, I'm gonna go ahead and go over some spoiler-free thoughts, and I'm gonna do some spoiler-filled thoughts as well to break down this amazing game. I'll be sure to let you all know when I'm gonna go over spoilers though, so do not worry. You can go ahead and skip it to the end once it gets to that point. But let's get started, bubs. Let's talk about the story here, and that's the biggest part that shines for me. For those that haven't played the original, you are Leon S. Kennedy, a special agent who was assigned a mission to save the president's daughter who was kidnapped. Leads have narrowed down a location in a remote area in Spain, and that's where he goes. Leon doesn't waste any time running into trouble, though. Literally, as soon as he gets into the village to ask some questions, all literal hell breaks loose. He finds the village infected with something called the Las Plagas, a parasite that attaches itself to its host and can be used for control. Controlled by who? Well, you have to find out that for yourself. Can Leon rescue the president's daughter safely? And more importantly, can Leon save his own skin along with her? As successful as the original Resident Evil 4 was, I did have some problems with the story. It wasn't bad by any means, but with replays you quickly find some pieces to the plot that didn't necessarily add up with the rest. But as soon as you start playing this remake, if you've played the original, you know this story is massively improved just from the intro alone. I'll talk further about the intro in the spoiler section, because I think Capcom made some very important and necessary changes to improve upon this. Talking more on the story as a whole though, the story was overall identical but with little tweaks and fixes that make the original story better. It's weird saying that, but if you know, you know. Every single character in this game is 10 times better than the original. I'm talking from Leon all the way down to the big bad. Except for one character, and I'll go into that in the spo- well, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and throw it down. Ada was kind of hit and miss for me, but let's go ahead and get back down to this. The dialogue was strong and re it really pulls you into the story. I cared about all of our good guys in this game, which was something I couldn't really say with the original. I liked them, sure, but this remake made me care deeply for every single character involved in helping Ashley get home safe. There was also a moment of sympathy for a villain, and I will discuss that later in the spoiler section. If you're a returning player of Resident Evil 4, you will have no problem whatsoever getting back into this remake and knowing what's going on, but you will also be pleased with the changes that have improved the story we all know and love. And if you're a new player to Resident Evil 4, I am so happy you get to experience this game like this. You newbies are going to freaking love it. The gameplay was also a massive overhaul in the best way possible. It's the same gameplay we know and love from Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake, but with a couple new mechanics and tweaks to the overall flow of the gameplay. One addition I am so glad to have is the stealth mechanic that also plays as dodge. It's not something that's necessary to use in the game, but it's a welcome addition. I can't tell you how many times I've also just ducked out of the way of oncoming projectiles and saved my life. It was rough at times playing the hardcore difficulty, and I hope they keep this mechanic in the future games. They also brought back the attach case to store your weapons and such, but with a twist. They also have charms you can add to the case that gives you boosts for different things, such as greater drop chances of handgun ammo and percent boosts with herbs. They also improved the melee mechanic that gives us a blend of defensive and offensive motions, a parry for defense, and jabs and slashes for offensive. 
It was super helpful to have, but it can hurt you each time you use your knife. It does lose its strength and will eventually break on you. So keep an eye out on that because I've had so many times where it broke and I wasn't paying attention and I got killed because of it. So. Just keep an eye out. One thing I'm really happy about this game is the look, feel, and sound design of the weapons. This is the first time I played a Resident Evil game and noticed this much detail in each of the weapons and I loved it. Each gun had a unique sound and it wasn't light. They were all heavy hitting machines. And when you shot the thing, it sounded like it was gonna blow you sky high. Before we close off the review though, I do have to talk about some spoilers now. So if you all want to go to the end to finish this, go ahead and skip it. I will give you three seconds. Okay, let's start with the intro. They fixed it. They finally fixed it. I was so pissed finding out that the end of Umbrella was caused by stocks. You mean to tell me the fall of Umbrella wasn't because of our main heroes we've been following this whole time, but it was due to the stock market crashing? Hell no, bub. I'm sorry, but that's stupid. Of course, Umbrella did fall, but it didn't really specify how to my knowledge, which means, I'm hoping, we get to see it in another remake. Wink wink. It's changes like that that makes this remake so much better than the original, and it's like that all throughout the game. Let's add another one. Sadler in general is very creepy in this game. He was kind of lame in the original the more I watched him and his plans never really added up. But in the remake, you have no idea what the hell is going on with him. He's just a nut job playing prophet up until the end and you get a brief file that explains he had some plans to take over the United States with the Plagas. I think that is so much better than how they did it in the original. He straight up tells Leon his goal to take over by using Ashley and infecting her and sending her back. But then he also tries to stop Leon and Ashley at the same time. It doesn't really make sense. You should have just let Leon take her back to begin with, you silly goose. Let's talk about another villain here though. Let's talk about one of the villains that I ended up really caring for and that was Krauser. I sort of felt bad for the guy. He felt wronged by his country and military due to them trying to sweep Operation Avier under the rug and keep it hush hush. And he decided he was done with that. He was not okay with that. And then he became obsessed with power and it blinded him. At least he saw the light of day and owned up to teaching Leon well. It was sad and I loved it. R.I.P. Krauser, you lustful, power-hungry, sad bastard, you. Rest in peace. The environments in this game were chef's kiss. Every single area I went to felt recognizable to a point, but it was beyond outdone with every minute detail. One section in particular that blew me away was in the village with all the bridges and wooden beams. Holy crap, I felt like I was in the village from King Kong or something. It was like that in every single section of the game. And the parts I mentioned about me having to stand up and swerve was the cabin set piece and the massively improved boss battle with Ramon Salazar. His boss battle wasn't that good in the original in my opinion, but in this remake, it was insane. I can close my eyes and picture that fantasy orchestra and Salazar flying around every corner. It felt like a Dark Souls boss in all the best ways and I loved that. That boss fight was the only fight that was changed dramatically and it was for good reason. The others felt timeless and memorable. I always said my favorite boss fight was with the big cheese and the giant shed building and it was almost identical. I loved it and I loved every single boss encounter we went up against. Now, some people may be upset about this. There was a boss cut from the game and that was the U3. I was waiting for it to pop up all the way up to the end and realized, oh, it's gone. We're about to fight Sadler. <laughs> It's a little sad, but it's also okay. In this story, I didn't really know where they could have fit it in. But we did get a mention of the U3 in a file, so that's good at least. At least we, you know, heard something about it. And let's not forget about the big, big bad Wesker. I was very anxious to see him in this remake. I was honestly unsure if they'd even include him due to us not seeing him in other remakes, but the way they handled it was perfect. Now with new players, they're gonna see this badass and wonder who the heck is this guy? And I think they did that on purpose. I think they're for sure going to remake five, but before that, I think they're gonna introduce us to him in a remake of one and Code Veronica. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it until proven wrong. Resident Evil 4 Remake is a game that wasn't needed at first thought, but welcomed entirely as soon as we started the intro. I'm sure we will hear people say that there's nothing a remake could improve upon, but they're wrong. 
And once they get their hands on a controller and experience this for themselves, they will learn that just like I did. Resident Evil 4 Remake improves absolutely everything the original did and even adds to it, just like another remake that did the same thing. It gets a perfect rating for me. If you've played Resident Evil 4 or haven't, get this game and experience it for yourself because you will be missing out on something truly special if not. I want to know what you all think though of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Did you all enjoy it? I really hope so. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you haven't already, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It does help me out a bunch. It not only helps me out, but you'll be seeing a lot of Resident Evil content going forward as well as other horror gaming content too. But until next time, take it easy bubs.